BBC Radio 1. Guitar 101 with Dom and Jack Saunders. <laughs> One, one, two, three. Oh, God, I right. change fingers. Happy! Oh, no. G-G-A. Killed it. My, <laughs> my guitar player that I watched yeah. out. It's going to be one of the biggest moments in our career so far. If I were to pick a dream festival, it would look a lot like the Reading Festival. Whoa, I've just not processed it yet, and I can't believe it happened to us, you know what I mean? Whoa. I love this place. Same. I worked in the shop. It's kind of giving me a bit of PTSD. <laughs> it feels like you're back. You're like, yeah, I'm a bit anxious. What do I need to catch up? What do I need to do? Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, hello, <laughs> sir, do you, want to, do you want to try a guitar? <laughs> so was Youngblood formed in here then, in the very early Absolutely. stages? The, the, the storeroom upstairs. Should we have a look upstairs then? Yeah, man, as I say, my job was to take the cases and bring them downstairs. Do you know what I mean? If someone bought a guitar... Come and have a look, come and have a look how many cases are in here. I never knew what I'd write in here because every day there'd be new cases in or whatever, so I'd find a new area of space. So like, I probably wrote a song there, wrote a song there, had a mental discovery euphoric moment there, <laughs> cried my eyes out there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wanted to kill myself there. This huge construction project could also change the character of areas on its roof forever. We filmed Tin Pan Boy up there. Tin Pan Alley. We had no money, no budget and we needed to get a video done about yeah. gentrification in the area. And we went on the roof that's completely illegal to be up there, and we got drums and guitars up there, and we're just like, looking at the builders, being like, eh, <laughs> mm, you're ruining this world, you, just shouting at them, being yeah. cocky as hell. Next thing we know, police, get down off there, and we're like, damn. I'm just a tin boy, don't wanna take my toys, hey. We do not be defeated, <laughs> Jack. We get up at five in the morning, we do two takes in like the track, the playback was so quiet. I was like, <laughs> I'm trying to give it so much energy. Yeah. I'd come down to London just to kind of figure out what human I wanted to be, mm. let alone what artist I wanted to be. The first couple of months was so hard because I thought I'd find this liberation instantly, and I didn't. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was working in a guitar shop, trying to get some kind of recognition, but nothing was coming. This is very young blood, I think. Yes, absolutely, the pink stag. I, th I think it's very you, to be honest. I mean, I'd happily take this. I think, I think it matches your jacket. What are we talking? Oh, it's cheap as well. It's cheap. It's cheap. I met someone that was very special to me, and, and, and he said, you have this energy and fire in you, but you're writing songs without it. I remember it, I just, I just saw it switched in me, and I had a flat in uh, West London, and I just lost myself and got immersed in figuring out what Youngblood was for everything, from sketching the costume to the pink socks to what I wanted my nails to look like, my black heart. I love you, will you marry me? Oh, what a shame we gotta pay for reality. Ain't it Where did you write, love you, will you marry me, and what, yeah. what spot's that? Here or down here. I'm surprised it's not like a plaque That's on the floor or something. Like, there's a part of my soul in here. So if you think about when you were up there writing those songs, did you ever have the thought, oh my God, I'm gonna be playing these on Reading Main Stage? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I, I just said to myself, if I could do that, then that would be enough for me. That's our festival. That's where we were. It's just the epitome of British youth culture at a festival. It's gonna be one of the biggest moments in our career. Can you kind of feel yourself up there thinking about it and writing those songs? It's like, getting me a bit emotional. I just wanna like tell him up there, just be like, keep going, man. Do you know what I mean? Fucking hell. Oh. Um, it's, it's mad. Yeah. And I've not, I've just not processed it yet. It's you know the first I mean? time. Whoa. I've just not processed it yet, and I can't believe it happened to us, you know what I mean? Whoa, not been here in so long. 
and just want to say it to him. Because it was hard. It's mad. Mental. Come here, <laughs> well done. Mental. Well done. <laughs> Reading is a sharing experience. It's a, it's a gathering of a tribe in some way, I suppose. Just a bunch of people who want to get together and love and love music. The first proper gig we ever had in the UK was the Reading Festival in 1995. We were booked to headline the side stage. It was crazy. The audience within the tent was definitely over capacity. So much the people were climbing the poles and the rafters and it was a thousand degrees in there before we even went on. And we started playing and the audience was just mental. And it looked like it was maybe gonna get out of hand. I listened to something from that the other day and um, God, we were so raw. I mean, it was like, we were just a noisy garage band. It was fun. These are the, the, the uh, five steps from the dressing room to the stage. And, you know, if you think of every single headliner that's played Reading Festival, you know, they've all walked up those five steps effectively. And you see bands that throughout have cut their teeth on the smaller stages, whether they're American, whether they're European, Japanese, whether they're um, UK acts, yeah, they've cut their teeth here. The Friday morning when we opened here, uh, you know, when we opened the arena, you know, you won't be able to see a bit of grass anywhere because there's people everywhere desperate to get in. It's the moment that, for me, it's the moment that's always been the best moment of the festival, really. The excitement starts to build when you see sort of the leads Instagram page, the, the, the stage getting built, and just the, the setup once the maps start coming out and you, you can start to piece together a bit more how your weekend's gonna go, where you're gonna camp. My name's Leon, I've been to Leeds Festival for the last 11 years. Uh, first went in 2008, it's my favorite weekend of the year. Preparation usually starts 1st of August, you know, we'll write a little list out what we need, set the tents up in the garden, make sure they're, you know, all right, go on the drinks run. Three days worth of, of bands and music and you, you can't go wrong really. Actually my favourite part of the site is out there with the, with the, with the festival goers if I'm being honest with you because um, I mean it, it's fantastic up here, it is fantastic up here but it's amazing down there. I remember seeing Public Enemy there and then I remember opening for I think the Prodigy there and then I, I remember playing there with them Crooked Vultures and I remember you know, playing with Iggy Pop there. And so I've always had a chance to see some of my favorite bands. And luckily, every time I look at the bill, I'm like, yes, I can't wait to see that. Yes, I can't wait to see that. Yes, I'm really excited. We met Youngblood when um, he came out to the Cal Jam Festival that we do in California. Oh my God, I mean, the guy just has so much energy and spirit that you look at that and you're like, wow, that's what you want to see when you come to see a gig, right? If I were to pick a dream festival um, or be able to curate a festival, it, it would look a lot like the Reading Festival. So you're here in Sheffield, man. I haven't been here that often, you know. Mate, mate. It's like my second time in Sheffield. Oh, for, this is where we're rehearsing. Like, you can see there's like painted cabs down there. This is mental. I can't believe I'm bringing you here. This is such a sick just, setup. And just because we've been on tour all the time, I was like, for Reading and Leeds, because we're doing Leeds first, I want to rehearse in Sheffield. Yeah. I just want to get back home. Get the air in your lungs. See me mum. Feel the realness. See me mum, I'm a Yorkshire say, pudding. Are you staying at home? I'm staying at home. Lovely. In my bed. That's the studio room. Is there anyone in there? Hello. Nobody be naked. <laughs> Ski. <laughs> well, I met Dom at this gig, um, that do you remember Chloe, and uh, Mikey was playing drums. And we're like, ah, oh, there's a drummer, I'm stealing. Can you imagine if I break my leg? Mate, I'm not in these Balenciagas, mate. They're so big. Like, I've got boats on my feet. <laughs> that day we went and we were rehearsing, and then all three of us stayed at Dom's. Play what we do at the end of the machine gun. So, at the end of the machine gun, it's like. We went out for a beer and a burger and just chatting, and went out for a few pints after it and stuff like that. So, it just felt like immediately the three of us were kind of yeah. like clicked. Split out! Split out! I knew Dom like a week and he was like, I'll oh, just move over with me. Then Mikey had to move down from Scotland. He's yeah. going to train every week for rehearsal. 
are these the flags that Yes, are... if the stage is going to look like this, there's yeah. going to be the flags there, there's going to be the backdrop behind, and then the amps. Ben! So we're just, he's just, he's just drilling. This is like a mini version. Dummy! Drum kit here. <laughs> Guitar here. Yeah. yeah. Me here. Walk off. And the stage is like, yeah. And now I'm in the crowd, I'm at the sounder. You've said an idea of what you want to do, but that's probably not how it's going to go. Never, because then it's not music, it's maths. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you've got a formula. And, and if I know you, you hate, hate maths. maths. Got oh. suspended from school oh. for Mooney, my maths teacher. That's a strong way to get suspended, that was, I mean, someone just told me to do it. You know what I'm like, don't yeah, do yeah, that, yeah. don't do they'll that. Prob they'll All probably right. still talk about that, though. Ski, <laughs> fuck it. This is the first time we've ever jammed it, so. I'm so happy we're playing Leeds first because I get to come home, get immersed in the culture of Redmond and Leeds and feel like I'm going again. That's Is that what you're playing? Oh, yeah, great, I'm tripping. Yeah, you know I mean, I feel like I've just finished my GCSEs and I'm going to have a laugh, but yeah. I'm actually going to play it. If I live today, would you wait for me or would you show us all the way? Let a magazine say. What's hard is we're always travelling, and I miss my sisters. But once you come home, and you do, I just reset like instantly. I feel like so happy, like I've just been for a beer with my mate and a burger, and now I'm just like. One of my managers is American, and I can't wait to show him it. And my tour manager is Australian, and I can't wait to come to Sheffield. This is Jess, my tour manager, and Gavin, my manager. <laughs> Jess hates being on camera. <laughs> when people come here, they understand me a bit more. It's just like, this is the I love you, you marry me sign, this is like a pub, and this is where I went to school, and this is my house. It would be easy to rehearse in London. Of course it would, because yeah. all the logistics make sense, but. I just said, please, they just let me rehearse in Sheffield. Because I want young blood and 15-year-old Dom to come together for this performance. That's what it's about. That's what's important. If I died, would you cry? Or would you come and... Let's go! It's going to be crazy because all my schoolmates are going. So they're all texting me like, oh, we'll be there, we'll be there, we'll be there. And it's mental because, like, three years ago, I was next to them yeah. watching it. Bury me alive. I think it's going to definitely mean something to my heart mm. because, as I say, I was there. You know what I mean? I was in that audience, like... How many people are going to be there? Yeah. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. Thank you, Leeds. Thank you, Reading. Get me a beer. I want to make sure I'm present in it so I get to enjoy every second of it. We usually set off at around midnight, just after midnight. That gets us there, sort of three, four in the morning. Um, no traffic, just get right in, get the tent pitched up, and then a little sleep and, and, and that's it, we're set up then, yeah. Hope you won't need these. Right, right. Well, yeah. let's go. Is it now? What a smell. Come on. I never take any of this for granted. When I get up there and start playing a song like Best of You or My Hero or All My Life or Pretender or Everlong or whatever it is, when I play one of those songs and I see the connection that people have to it, I'm just like, how the fuck did this happen? When we play shows, there are songs that, of course, I want to play because they're songs that we kind of share with the audience. So some of the more well-known songs, they really bring these like emotional like, peaks 
in the set list. And I love that. I love it when the audience is really engaged and involved and and it's, you know, when you're singing a chorus with 50 or 60 or 80,000 people, it's amazing. It's a great feeling and it really brings everyone together. Just as much as I love like bashing out some noisy shit that people might not be familiar with. So when I write a set list, I want to make sure that, you know, you're taking people on a ride and you're not leaving them out in the fucking cold for too long. You got to keep the thing moving. With something like Reading, I mean, obviously, we, we've thought about doing some sort of crazy retrospective, like playing the same set from the tent from 25 years ago, whatever it was. Um, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's 25 years later and there's so much more. If we played everything that everyone wanted to hear, the set would be like five fucking hours long. So we have to really kind of decide what we're gonna do. And we usually don't make that decision until a few hours before the show, just to see what it's like. I still walk on stage like, God, I hope they like the Foo Fighters, even if it's a Foo Fighters show. And um, then when, by the end of the night, I'm like, oh, that was great. <laughs> Three, two, one, come on, come on, come on. It's all in full swing, yeah, we're very, uh, yeah, very much in full swing, actually, to be fair. We're 90,000 people camping, 15,000 people coming just for the day. Eight, nine, 10, 11 stages just choose from. It's a joy, to be honest, seeing all that come together, really, in that sense of it, so it's really good. Very happy with it. Yeah, so once we're through the gates and the tent set up, um, get the chairs out, have a couple of beers, and. I'm, I'm happy then, yeah. The atmosphere is just brilliant and you can sort of chill out and, and obviously you get to see some cool bands. I've not seen you like this yet. It's the only time in my life I'm calm. Because I didn't expect you to be particularly calm right now. Everyone always says this to me, it's like the only time in, in my life, you'll see me calm if you come and find me just before I go on stage. It's the only time in my life where my body just goes like, before I kind of hit it. You know what I mean? I think it's like an inner stillness. It's what, which I ne where I never find in real life, where I hear the drums and I hear the crowd and I hear it, and I'm just like, everything's just like magic. I'm nervous. I know you it's are. Good. I can tell you're it's nervous. It's good, I love feeling nervous. I get nervous for everything. Even acoustic shows, even radio shows, everything, I get nervous. And I love that because it means I'm still here. Do you know what I mean? It means I'm still here because I'm feeling it. I can physically almost feel myself. Like I know my eyes are closed and I can hear my heartbeat. That's when you know it's important. You hit physically here inside yourself, your heartbeat, and I love that. And I'm probably thinking, what is about to happen? I used to run away and put my headphones on and that was my escape. And it, I would look at artists like Lady Gaga. I would look at artists like Marilyn Manson. I would look at artists like the Arctic Monkeys. They're like me in a way that they felt like they didn't belong in a mold, so they just built their own. something wrong with my personality and I thought there was something wrong with the way I felt and the way I thought and the way I, I was but I was just kind of expressing myself in a way that wasn't in between the lines yeah, I remember my mum saying to me, come enjoy this because if, if, if you ever get lucky enough to get anywhere, then this is what is going to actually define you and make you not become jaded and not become a nasty person. I wanted 
defeat the barriers between an audience and an artist. It's not me and them. Youngblood isn't me. 50% of it is they are the accumulation of it all. It's everyone included together, going mental together. Yo, I want more! Let's split out, this song's called Machine Gun! I was always into politics, I was always turned on by chaos and freedom of speech. I've got this vision of me running into the crowd, letting them hold me up, and me just waving this flag, at Red and Leeds, pink flag. I'm physically standing and they're holding me. It's the first time in my life I felt empowered. Ever. And it's awesome. And I, I just want to make other people feel that because it's sick. You know what I mean? I just can't explain to you how amazing it is to be able to force back on something that I actually trust. And we've built something where if someone falls, we'll get picked back up. When you stood there, like, you can live for ages, you can live forever. And I know it sounds rubbish and whatever, because like, oh yeah, you can live forever, but I mean, I get it. This was a dream come true for the end of year. Yeah, there is hell for the end. That moment was that moment, and it will never come again and it was perfect. It was just like raw, and I remembered every minute of it, and then machine gun at the end when we had the flag, and then they dropped me, and then it was perfect. That's a milestone, we just played Red and Lee's now. Two years, on want to it, let's go. Hello. You want a headline there in two years? Two years, touch wood. Did you hear that? Two years, this guy's gonna be up there. It just feels like the beginning now. That felt like the, we're at, like we're at, we're just at the races, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We've just left. Thank you for everything. Love you, man. Love you too. Oh, stop.